Hey everyone, this is a change of pace from my regular reef videos. Um, I apologize, but this is something that I love to do on the side if I'm not looking at fish tanks. I'm using a nice pellet grill to make some delicious ribs. So I thought I'd share a quick recipe with you guys on one of your pellet um, grills and you can use Traeger grills. I've got a Camp Chef, I believe there's Pit Boss as well. You can pick up at a local Walmart. And uh, I'm gonna give you guys a quick little recipe on uh, what I put on these ribs for my own little special blend. And then I'm also gonna use as a comparison because this has two racks, um, a regular pre-made spice blend versus my own dry rub plus sauce. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy and uh, I'll put the recipe in the link below or the comments below so you guys can follow along. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick snap as to what I put in my sauce to coat my ribs in before I smoke them, bake them, and then enjoy them. So first things first, I've got my bl blend of spices already. I've got brown sugar as my base, chili powder, black pepper, salt, ground garlic, and then I've also got some paprika here. Um, now I'm gonna add a couple more ingredients for a, <laughs> basically a sauce. I'm gonna add some soy sauce, ketchup as a base, uh, a little bit of white vinegar, some apple juice, and I'm also gonna put in a little bit of minced garlic. So I'm gonna add these guys in. Uh, again, I'll put the recipe below, and I've got two tablespoons of paprika. This is a half a cup of brown sugar that I'm putting it into. I've got two and a half tablespoons of salt, and then I've got also a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a tablespoon of chili powder, and then a full tablespoon of freshly ground um, black pepper. Now I use freshly ground, it's really important. If you buy the stuff that's already pre-done, it just doesn't have the same kick that a freshly done one will do. So now I'm gonna mix this up, um, just kind of get rid of any clumps in the brown sugar, and you should see that paprika make that nice blend in color. And as I blend it in, you're gonna see that paprika blend right in and give it a nice color. And you see that pepper mixed in as well. So next we're gonna add some of our wet ingredients. Now for our wet ingredients, I've got soy sauce, ketchup, a little bit of mustard, apple juice and I got some pure white vinegar you can pick up really cheap so I'm gonna give it a little splash of vinegar that gives it a little bit of a nice taste more of that um, barbecue kind of flavor some apple juice another splash of that now, apple juice is important pick up a can of this when you're gonna do the ribs we're gonna be basting them on a half hour basis in the smoker and give them a quick spray um, a few times during the cooking process. So you're gonna need a bit of apple juice and you're also gonna need a sprayer. And next goes the ketchup. Lots of ketchup that gives us a good base. A little bit of mustard. Shake up your mustard. And then last but not least, a little bit of soy sauce. And then we also have our minced garlic, which I get from Costco. Grab it from my fridge. Pure mixed California garlic. I'm gonna take a spoon and throw in a nice tablespoon of garlic. So I'm gonna give this a quick mix. And as I'm mixing this, I'm making sure to get all of the brown sugar from the bottom and all of our dry ingredients mixed up really well. So our barbecue sauce is all mixed up, and let's go next over to the sink, and we're gonna show you guys how to prepare those yummy ribs that you picked up. I've got two things that I need for this job, a really, really nice sharp knife, some paper towel, or a good napkin that doesn't want to tear, and then of course, you got your ribs. Now I picked these up from Walmart. Uh, they were on sale, 15 bucks for two racks. I couldn't go wrong, they are pork back ribs. Uh, side ribs are okay if you want more of a uh, not so tender, little cheaper version of ribs. Um, you're gonna pay a little bit more usually for back ribs, um, but a side rib will also do just fine. It'll just be a little more grisly and not quite as tender. Um, typically more connective tissue will be in the side ribs versus the back ribs. So for most of the parts, I'd rather start with a decent set of or a piece of meat and then uh, get better results that way. 
a lot of the times I've had um, side ribs not be quite as good. So I'll take them out of their package and give them a quick rinse here. So the silver skin that I'm talking about is this back side, not the front side here. There's nothing to remove, uh, but this side, you're going to want to remove this layer. Now, good technique to be doing that. You can try and try and try again, and you might get lucky like I have here. Hopefully this is going to work, but this is a little piece of that silver skin that is not attached. So you want to get underneath it. <laughs> I got lucky and pull all of that silver skin away. Thus leaving you with the back of the ribs exposed. Uh, if you leave this in place, you're very welcome to. It's not a problem. Um, it's just gonna make these ribs a little tougher to fall off the bone kind of deal at the end when you're done cooking them because it's gonna have that bit of connective tissue still left on the ribs. So there you go. Silver skin removed on this rack. And we'll do the same thing with this one. So hopefully we'll get quite as lucky. And we're gonna look for any kind of piece and it looks like I might not be quite as fortunate with this one. So the other option is then taking your sharp knife, making a little slice in the top here to cut that silver skin. It can be kind of tough. There I've made a little incision. Then we're going to try and get underneath it so you can get it started. Now this is where the paper towel comes into play because this stuff is so slippery. If you grab a piece of paper towel, should be able to grab onto that piece of skin and actually give it a decent pull. Now that I've got a little bit off, I should be able to do that again. So keep your paper towel. I'm gonna have just cut off some excess tissue here that is just a little extra from the process. And we'll get rid of this little bit left and we are done. So after this is all finished, I'm gonna give these guys a little rinse get rid of the connected tissue that's laying around and then we'll get ready for our dry rubs and the sauces and you can choose either or okay we are now ready for our dry rubs and our sauce application so I'm gonna do grab a container and I'm gonna throw that in um, and I'll show you guys how to do that okay so we are back at the kitchen I'm gonna put on some gloves these are nice, it just gets, make sure that your hands don't get full of the barbecue sauce or your rub that you're using. Um, it just makes it a little cleaner. And then also you can take one off and deal with more of your um, sauces and stuff without having to go wash your hands a thousand times. So it does make it kind of nice. We're gonna put on our gloves and I'm gonna show you guys how to do the dry rub first. Uh, so we're gonna take our rack of ribs. Again, silver skin removed. Then we're going to take some mustard. See, already I've gotten my hands wet and dirty and I shouldn't have. That's fine. We're going to remove that glove. And we're going to apply a little bit of mustard and then rub that in. I'm going to put a little ketchup on here as well because I love ketchup. A lot of people like to use mustard. They say it doesn't add a flavor. I think it kind of does. That's all right. It's just because maybe I don't like it as much. Then I'm going to rub this in. Give it a nice coating all over the ribs. Now this can get messy, so don't be afraid to get messy. I'm gonna clean my counter after all this is done. Another bit of mustard on top of the back. And again, some ketchup too. And we're gonna make sure every little bit of this rack of ribs is coated so that our dry rub can stick to the ribs and gives it a good chance to be coated and for the stuff not to be falling off. This here, I've got a keg chicken and rib rub. It's the first time I've ever used this stuff. We'll see how it goes. There's a thousand different blends of spices you can buy at any kind of barbecue store. I'm gonna make sure this is all nicely mixed up. And you can pick whatever you guys like. Obviously, everybody's flavors are different. And I'm somebody who doesn't like a lot of spice, but that's okay, that's just myself. But you are very welcome to use whatever you like to coat your ribs. 
I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see this here. This looks delicious and not only does it look delicious, it smells amazing. Got some really thick, coarse spices in here. Of course, they don't tell you what's in them, which they did. But again, we're just gonna give it a nice coating, pat it down so that stuff has a chance to stick to the ribs. Flip it over, do the same to the back. And don't be afraid to use lots of spice. This is also going to help you get a delicious flavor in the end. And this way, most of this stuff will stick on and stay on at this part of the process. Uh, it's always kind of harder to add spices later on because the ribs tend to get a little hard and stuff doesn't stick as well to somewhat cooked ribs as it does when they're raw. So there we go, we're getting this nice coating. Make sure you get the ends. Doesn't that look delicious? I don't know about you, but it makes me hungry. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab, I'm gonna leave this one out actually. There's one rack rib done. Then I've got a container here. This is something I just pick up at the dollar store. Got my other rack of ribs in here. And what I'm gonna do with this guy is I'm going to apply my fancy pre-made barbecue sauce. I'm gonna throw that all over there. And I got a little bit of this stuff. You know what, for sake of making it exactly how it should be, the gloves are off. And I'm gonna rub this stuff in so that it gets a nice good even coating over the entire rack of ribs. See, this is where having a couple of pairs of gloves would be good. I only had one. So we're gonna rub that in, give it a nice good coating, and man, does this smell good. So now, uh, once these are all coated, we're gonna leave these for 24 hours, in the fridge, of course, and let that marinate, making sure we get every little spot over. Now, because this recipe that I gave you guys for the barbecue sauce has Quite a bit more um, left over. That's the best part is you get to use that later on for coating the ribs at the very end stage of cooking and for putting a little extra when you want to dip them, whatever you like to do. That's up to you. So check back tomorrow. What we're going to do is we're going to let these marinate in the fridge 24 hours and then we're going to start up our smoker and show you guys how that all works and you're going to have the best ribs I guarantee that you've ever had. And just as a side note before I wrap these up, um, a lot of people like to use a cling wrap. Um, you can wrap the ribs individually and do it that way if you like to. That's actually a really good way of doing it. Um, and doing so, you don't have to have this big massive container. You can just take your rack of ribs, throw out a little cling wrap. And wrap them up nice and tight. Also gives you a chance to really get those spices pushed into the ribs. So I'm gonna try and be careful with this, not to get myself all dirty again. Nice packaged rack of ribs ready for the fridge and you can store them nice and easy this way put your other stack on top because I've got two separate sauces I want them separate I don't want them to be together I want to see the difference in how this stuff tastes so we are going to wrap up the other set and they'll be ready for the fridge Hey guys, it's been 24 hours and we're gonna pull these ribs out of our fridge. We're gonna let them rest for approximately half an hour to an hour just to get these ribs to a room temperature or slightly warmer than the fridge temperature. And we're gonna start up the uh, pellet grill and get that smoking and we're gonna smoke these ribs for three hours. So that's the trick. Um, you've got a three, two, one setting that we're gonna be doing. So we got three hours of smoking, two hours of foil wrap cooking, and then another hour just to braise it give it a nice glaze and then get it ready for, uh, for eating. So I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna unpack our ribs here and we're gonna get the smoker running. So 
So like I said, it's been 24 hours. Ribs smell incredible. Um, the rib rub that I made, super good. Um, it's got a nice peppery flavor smell to it. Um, I love the pepper smell and I love the pepper flavor. Um, it smells like, this one's got more of like a mustardy flavor. It's got a nice pepper flake to it as well. Uh, this is the keg chicken and rib rub. And I'm really excited to see how this works and how this tastes. It's kind of a new thing for me. I've never used it before. So we'll see how it tastes and compares to my known and true uh, rib rub. So we'll leave these out for a half an hour approximately, get the smoker running. We're gonna run it to about uh, 175 to 250, somewhere in that range for three hours. We're gonna put these ribs um, flat down with the bones down, uh, your meat side up. And then we're gonna also prepare our uh, spray, which is just gonna be apple juice, maybe a little bit of brown sugar. And now we're gonna be spraying that every half an hour. my Camp Chef Smoke Pro barbecue smoker. This is a pellet grill, temperature controlled, smoke settings up to 500 degrees, and these are all the lovely. I'm gonna use hickory wood pellets today for these ribs. This is one of my favorite woods to use because the wood ribs an amazing flavor. Something that you just can't get in with a, a smoker or a, uh, an oven. So we're gonna start this up. Lift it on a high smoke setting. That's gonna bring up to about 200 degrees. That flame is gonna start up pretty soon. And this grill is gonna be ready for its smoking. All right, so we're gonna fill up a spray bottle I got from Dollarama and Dollar Store, and we're gonna put a little bit of nice pure apple juice in there. And this is what we're gonna to use to base the ribs every half an hour while they smoke on the grill. We don't need a lot. Twist the top on. Get it on a nice misting setting, and this will be your spray that you're gonna be using for the half every half hour for the first three hours of your smoking process. Hey everyone, so I'm out here at my grill. Um, it is smoking, we've got it on, um, I'm gonna put it on a low smoke, so we're down to about 200, 225 in there to give it a good hickory smoke, and that's gonna be for three hours. We're gonna lay these ribs down flat on the rib side down and where we removed that silver skin earlier and we're gonna let them smoke from there. So I'm gonna show you guys, we'll get that going. Here are these delicious ribs. They've been resting for a little bit out of the fridge to get warmed up. That's our keg rub. The one recipe I showed you guys, my special blend. Right on front, these guys are spaced properly apart. Give them some space so that you get some smoke between them. Close the lid. And we'll be back in a half an hour to give them a little spritz of our apple juice, which we've got sitting out here, ready to go. So we are back out here at the smoker. I'm gonna take this nice little jug of apple juice and we're gonna spray our ribs. It's been about a half an hour now. And uh, we're gonna give these a nice little flicker of some apple juice to keep them moist during the smoking process. This is the part you're only gonna do this for is for the first three hours. Give them a nice, even coat. This is gonna give them a little moisture while they smoke and give them that nice caramelized, sugary sweet flavor. So instead of showing you guys a thousand times and me going back and forth every half an hour, um, I'm gonna speed it along the process and we're gonna show you the next uh, tin foil wrap at the three hour mark. I mean, you're very welcome to do this in two hours, two and a half hours for the smoking, whatever you prefer. Um, I like to do three, two hours of cooking, and then usually an hour for braising and giving that a nice, good barbecued uh, flavor. Um, completely up to you guys, but I love the 3 2, one method. It gives it a nice chance to slow roast and get it really tender, uh, fall off the bone ribs almost every time. So good luck guys, and we'll see you in a minute while we, uh, before we wrap them up and get them ready for cooking. So giving these ribs a third dose of their apple juice spray, they're starting to stiffen up a little bit, get that smoke color, and they are looking and smelling fantastic. Very excited. Everyone, we're back at the grill. 
Uh, I'm gonna pull these ribs out. I'm gonna use some tongs. I've got four pieces of aluminum foil ready to go, two for each rack of ribs. I'm gonna pull them out, put them in there, and we'll get them ready, prepared to cook for another two hours. The first rack is my special blend. So this one I'm gonna be adding, this is your chance to add your barbecue sauces, um, any extra moisture that you wanna to add to your ribs. This is gonna be your opportunity. So we're gonna put this nice barbecue sauce, smother it on top. And we're gonna add some apple juice to the bottom for the splash to give it some moisture. And then we're gonna, do, we're gonna package this up, smooth it all out, wrap it all, make it nice and airtight. Two layers of tin foil, I'll use extra heavy duty tin foil for this process. And then this way the ribs are gonna be able to basically roast in that tin foil for the next two hours. Low and slow, 250, and you'll have delicious ribs. So I'll do these both racks real quick and we'll get them back on the grill. Two racks of ribs ready to go back on the grill at 250 for it's gonna be another two hours. Do not open them, leave them as they are. And you'll have perfect results. This is the moment of truth. The two hour cooking period has been done. They're still in the tin foil wrap. We're gonna turn this guy off here. Shut down. Let that run through. Actually, no, we're not going to do that, I lied. We're gonna kick it into high gear. So this part, we're gonna unwrap these, get them off the grill. And we're gonna braise them to give them that lovely color and char that we want from a barbecue. So that's gonna heat up really quick. We're gonna get these unwrapped and back on the barbecue. So I have unwrapped the first one. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells absolutely incredible. This is the cake spice. It's got it just tearing away from the bone there. That is a perfect sign that this is getting ready to go. This is going to just pull away, no problem, but beautiful color. Flavor is incredible. I'm really excited. These are the last and final rack of ribs here. You can see that the bones are poking out at the end. That is exactly what we're looking for. Smells incredible. You're going to be absolutely delighted by this recipe. We're going to throw these back on the barbecue, braise them, put a little more glaze them and they're gonna be ready to eat. Hope you guys enjoy, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna try and come up with some more videos on chicken, um, some pepperoni, even some beef jerky. So if you guys keep back, I'm gonna make some more videos on this barbecue and make some nice smoking videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like, to, if you like this stuff, subscribe, comment. Love to hear your feedback, thank you so much. All right, so I've got them on the grill. Um, they have come out of their packages back into the grill. Got my barbecue sauce. I'm gonna braise these guys here real quick. Give them some nice juicy sauce and that's gonna caramelize on top. I'll flip them over and then they'll be ready to go. I have given them a flip. I have covered them in barbecue sauce. This is the last stage. Gonna give them a little bit of a char on the top. And then we can cut them up and enjoy. Thanks for watching guys.